Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage here in the New York Stock Exchange. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We are here on our set. We're dropping in for a media day all three weeks here in, 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 in the New York Stock Exchange. We're going to be looking at all the top trends around climate week, climate tech, I'll say the UN's in town, and we're going to actually unpack the global nature of course. The topic is going to be AI. And our next guest, Kurt McHugh, and co-founder and CEO of Carbon Arc. Kurt, great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me. So we've got a nice backdrop here we're on the floor of the Stock Exchange. This is where business and technology are intersecting. It's a busy week. Um, you know, the top story in the world is you know, the impact of you know, how people are living their lives and running their businesses operationally, but then the generative AI wave is here. And you're starting to see that nexus forming where you're seeing a transformation you know, across all theaters, every industry, every government, policy, all aspects of it. The data is changing everything. The, the stack is looking like it's evolving quickly into being data driven. You're at the middle of it. The, what's going on with Carbon Black? Give us a quick overview. First, take a minute to explain what you guys do. Sure, so uh, you know, my background is I spent 20 years uh, in investment management on the buy side on Wall Street, uh, and I built research systems at those shops. Um, sitting in that seat, uh, I was buying a lot of data. And the thing that you, know, you learn buying a lot of data on Wall Street is that it's easier to buy a house or a car than it is to buy a data set in the United States. When you start thinking about um, you know, sort of the supply demand dynamic for data sets, they're really expensive, really hard to work with, yeah. and all that fun stuff. Carbon Arc is stepping into the middle of that to solve that problem. If you think about the AI economy, there are three core components we break them up into. The models, the chips, and the data structure. And we're attacking the data structure problem. We're basically fundamentally building an insight marketplace where data suppliers can bring their data assets to Carbon Arc, um, get them structured in a way that's consumable for our consumers and our, our, our customers yeah. come to the marketplace to buy data. It was interesting as i um, been covering this big data wave for 15 years since SiliconANGLE was founded when I started the company with Dave Vellante. Back then, was Hadoop was the big story, if you remember those days, and it was hard to set up, but now with cloud technology and now with the generative AI, you now have scalable infrastructure on the semiconductor side, look no long, no, no further than Nvidia. Look at the stock was up yesterday again. Hit the market hit an all-time high. Semiconductors at the silicon level, custom silicon, and then at the data layer, you got open data formats. You have now intelligent applications being built. So you got this kind of data operations going on, and the ability to acquire data now it becomes a competitive advantage. And if you look at all the aspects of the top apps, they're programming down to the kernel level and systems level at the same time, making as much data available to the AI systems as much as possible, the more data, the more intelligent. So, okay, sounds easy, sounds, I buy the logic, right? but it's hard. Very hard. Okay, so take us through what, what the, some of the challenges are today, because you, know, you got governance, is, is it proprietary data, is it open data, is it clean data, has it been infected with, with malware, has it been infected with prompt injections, has it been context poisoned? I mean, there's a slew of challenges. That's right. And data, what are the, some of the things you see? Well, the, t the challenges are all the ones you've named. Uh, there's also data provenance. Um, there's people getting paid for their IP, all right? So data asset owners being conventionally paid for uh, consumption of their data. Um, what, we are, what we are looking to do is bring markets-based approach and financial system first principles to the data market structure. Um, we, we look at the GPT moment uh, in AI as the Black Shoals moment yeah. uh, on Wall Street, yeah. right? And so fundamentally we think what's going to happen on Main Street in corporate space over the next five to 10 years is what happened on Wall Street over the last 40 to 50. It's interesting you mentioned Black Shoals. That was a critical moment. The other one in Wall Street was high frequency trading. Right. Um, getting an edge on speed, move the pack of speed alike, get closer to the trade, make more money. Now we're seeing high frequency insights. We're seeing high frequency um, productivity. And I think one of the things that's coming out, and I know you guys, I saw it on your website, you guys believe in this, is that productivity and human insight's huge. That's right. Um, this is a data advantage. How are your customers looking at this? Because you know, you got to get the data. Are they mindful of the productivity angle or is that still an operational challenge? Where, where are your customers at? So customers are across the gamut. You have, um, you know, sort of at, 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 at the top of our customer stack, we have AI native companies that are coming into our stack to pull data down through the pipe at, at, at meaningful levels uh, to power models and, and, and train models, all the way down to people who've never used data to make decisions before. And that digital transformation journey, we're meeting people where they are. You know, at a fundamental level, you know, you, you start with a data set on the left side of the ledger, and you have to make a decision on the right side, right? So one of the things we always said on Wall Street is, it doesn't matter the insight, you still have to trade the stock. You still have to take yeah. risk. And so all we're trying to do is build into the use cases and modular decisions 
that every company needs to make uh, to inform, you know, sort of their decisions with customers and their decisions with suppliers mm -hmm. and really understand sort of that demand management framework. I want to unpack the marketplace aspect of data because sure. everyone who watches theCUBE knows I'm a huge fan of marketplaces. There's so much efficiency in it. Uh, there's more optionality. Everything kind of really works well in marketplaces. Let's talk about um, Carbon Arc and the, the, the origination story, where you guys are at. Take us through the, the company history and then what's the status, funding, employees, customers? Sure, um, so you know, si sitting on Wall Street, um, started to look at and understand the data market structure and the imbalances in, in sort of data. And, and it was natural monopolies, data monopolies, um, you know, Nielsen and IRI and CoStar, you know, Facebook, Google, um, you know, sort of Bloomberg, all of these created massive silos, so data didn't flow, yeah. right? It was really expensive, really hard to work with. Um, you need engineers, you need scientists to make sense of it. You know, at the end of the day, we wanted to create uh, a marketplace where the transaction was the insight, because that's the payload to make the decision. It's closer to the transaction, which is that final decision. Started Carbon Arc in, in March of 2021, um, and, 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 and started to you know, sort of buy data to structure it the right way, uh, to deliver you know, through, through API endpoints and dashboards, um, all of the different inputs that a consumer, whether it's a big three consulting firm or a Wall Street hedge fund, um, or you know, sort of a sports organization um, to make better decisions around um, when they should have their next event or who should be at their next concert or whether they should remodel stores, right? So, you know, started to, you know, sort of, we, we've raised about $50 million to date. Um, we've got about 30 customers. Um, that's across the gamut from Wall Street to Main Street. You know, we've been broad in our verticals. We have uh, consumer products companies. Uh, we have sports organizations, sports teams, uh, live event managers, um, you know, Wall Street, you know, firms, uh, you know, across the gamut. Uh, we've got about 30 employees um, and we've got, you know, sort of, uh, you know, 60 suppliers on the left side of the ledger delivering their data yeah. into our exchange and they're getting paid on consumption and we're getting paid on consumption. So we've created a two-sided consumption-based exchange. I love that. And take us through the data structure problem. What, what are you solving there? Because again, data is complicated when you start thinking about lineage, uh, where does it come from, the supply chain aspect of it. I, I like how you got this with the endpoints, with APIs, clearly the way to go. What's, what do you mean by you, you help structure the data? Take us through that problem and what you guys did. So the, da the data structure problem is, 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 is actually at core, um, what, what, what provides the scaffolding for the modular frameworks and making decisions. At the end of the day, we live in a world and, 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 and believe that th every company in the world is trying to figure out where their inventory is, how do they move it, and how do they sell it, right? And so we've modularized all of those different funnels and frameworks and boil down those use cases against entity structure and event structure. So, you know, sort of our entity structure is, is really based around companies, brands, people, and locations. We pivot around those points in graph and we deliver against an event structure because we believe that you need any event to make a decision. And where Wall Street and Main Street collide is at that, you know, that mirror of company decisions. Management teams are trying to improve their revenues or cut their costs, and Wall Street's trying to figure out if they're doing a good job at it. Why are companies buying from you? Is it because they want more insights? Are they solving the data problem? Are they getting more access to data? What's the main it, challenge? It depends. Um, some of it's just data access, right? So, you know, we have all this data structured and you pay for what you consume. So, you know, you, you, you can actually digitally transform against your seat in CarbonArc because you now have all this ability to work with data to answer the questions that you need answered around targeting or retaining customers around uh, visibility into your supply chain. Um, and so, you know, some of it's data availability, some of it's, a lot of it's price. At the end of the day, people need the data that they need, but they don't need all the data that comes with buying something from a large data provider. And so the data providers like us, because we create distribution yep. into a part of the market that they have never captured mm -hmm. before. And our consumers are coming to market because they can use, they can buy data as a, an OPEX, not a CAPEX. Yeah, and they get more access, so it's not controlled by the gatekeepers that were controlling the data sets in the past. That's exactly right. And it's mostly public data on your side of the marketplace. Is it all public data? It's commercially, it's commercial providers. Uh, you know, we, we, we have uh, open source data, but we also have closed source where we uh, partner with commercial providers who are, you know, coming to market and, you know, sort of selling their data into our, into our exchange. Give an example of a customer use case. A customer use case, um, you know, sort of one of our partners uh, is a professional sports team. Uh, they own their stadium. And, uh, you know, on off nights, they have to figure out who's going to play it. So they've used uh, our data stack 
to figure out which which concerts uh, they should be playing in their market and how sh- how they should think about uh, curating food and beverage based on those folks who like those uh, that 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 specific act. Um, that's one use case. Um, you know, another use case is um, you know sort of uh, thinking about um, which brands they want to have partners um, at different events um, for you know a large uh, professional sports league, um, and so you know really sort of creating. Uh, improve conversion rates around targeting, acquiring, yeah. upselling, retaining. So living in that CLTV equation. People watching right now are, might be interested. Why should they buy from you? What's burning in their world that would change in working with Carbon Arc? What's the key thing? Is it market intelligence? Is it more you know time to market on on the value of their assets? What's the main uh, thing that people would be? Hey, I should I should be leaning into this. It's improving their conversion rate. And at the end of the day, um, anytime you're buying data as a data buyer, you have to you have to inform one of three things creating more opportunities for your business, improving your hit rate, yeah. or you know, making bigger bets. Whether you're trading on Wall Street or you're you know, managing uh, you know, sort of a wholesale uh, you know, consumer goods business, right? Those are the three things. Um, we think we live in a world where we're helping people improve their hit rate. What's interesting is, is that you guys are democratizing the data set business by creating this marketplace. Uh, of the page you go to is, is great with cloud consumption model. You see that uh, APIs make it accessible for applications. Um, where, what's next? What, what's the main innovation that you guys are doing? Is it available to data sets? Is there any secret sauce that you guys have built into the system? Well, you know, the, the system design, you know, is all open source and, you know, sort of we've, we've forked a number of open source technologies and built uh, a framework that, that, that works and we're layering on the knowledge on top for the data structure and entity structure that, you know, sort of powers modular decision-making um, where it goes is not dissimilar to what happened on Wall Street over the last 50 years. So, you know, sort of, the way the way we're we're building everything is around driving tea costs down on a per you know consumption basis, and really sort of evolving the different products um, that sort of people can consume in their models to make better decisions. We think that you can factor Taylor Swift. Yeah, she has she has momentum, resonance, yeah. and persistence. Yeah, and those are factor frameworks that follow the CAPM uh, you know sort of regime. Take me through um, how you see the market in terms of consumption on the consumption side. Okay, you got a marketplace, you got a lot of data sets. I'm a user. Uh, consuming that is is going to be what I really care about. Obviously, the conversion for sales, my business. Okay, check that checks all the boxes. What's the old model uh, compare? How does the old model compare to what you guys are doing? That's innovative. Is it speed? Is it consumability? If without you, what would be the choice of the customer? It's, it's setting stuff up, big contracts. It's, it's, it's the old setup, right? Which is uh, you, the way I always say it is that you know data sets trade like 1930s equities. You need a big bag of cash, you need to be a market operator, and you need to show up at one of the 13 exchanges in the United States to walk away with a block of stock. Um, data bu- buying and selling is very similar now. It's a long lead time and sales cycle from a legal perspective and a contracting perspective. You need to hire a couple of engineers and a scientist to make sense of it. And then it's it's trying to figure out that ROI attribution on the other side of that CapEx built, right? Um, it's time, yeah. it's money, and it's, it's a capital outlay here you get stood up, we're your counterparty, we vetted everything against your terms of use and the data provider's terms of use. Um, you plug into the APIs of the dashboards and you can start making decisions in a week. Yeah, I mean, that's the key thing. That's why cloud is such a great uh, change the world uh, over a decade ago because the ability to stand something up, whether it's a data center, cloud comes in. Data sets, huge money, huge contracts, set up the plumbing, all the engineering involved, yep. and then the compliance. That's I mean. Where's that data coming from? What's the terms of service? All those things create huge lag times, and most people will just abandon and they're like, "Okay, I'm done. That's right. tap out." That's the old, and, one. and that's what you've seen with the corporate space specifically. Um, big tech being data native and web native, um, they have a you know critical advantage in digital transformation. But when you look at yeah. the bulk of of of, of um, corporate America. You know, there's been a dearth of data. You know, and 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 sort of they've been focused on engaging with you know sort of benchmark type data. And now there's an opportunity to expand on that. We're seeing a lot of interest in that. So take me through the journey as an entrepreneur. You get started, just started the company a few years ago. You're in it now. What's that been like for you? You guys got some good financing behind you. You got some good cash. Got some great customers. Developed a horizontal solution. Every vertical needs data. Um, take us through your journey and 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 how you see the future. Yeah. So you know. I spent I spent 20 years on the buy side on Wall Street, and I, and I built businesses inside of large hedge funds. And in in doing that, I had 
I, you know, it, it's, I would say that building a business outside has been humbling. It's been like building, uh, you know, building a business on a Bo Boston whaler in the North Atlantic <laughs> before I was building on aircraft carriers in Lake Michigan, yeah. right? So, um, you know, having, you know, a mandate from senior folks at these firms and then having captive customer bases yeah. inside of those organizations, I didn't appreciate um, the double cold start problem that we that we tackled the carbon arc, and that's been super humbling and uh, really challenging at different times. Yeah. But really having a big big vision and getting up to every day with a, a mission driven approach to democratization of insight has been a huge tailwind in, in yeah. sort of you know yeah. keeping the ball going. Where I think where I think the world is going, I actually think in ten years you're going to see these types of data inputs traded, not stocks. I actually think they're closer to ground truth and model to model decision making. You know, models are becoming yep. a market every day. Um, agents will be buying data and selling data. And, you know, sort of, I, I think exchanges are natural, yeah. um, you know, centralized frameworks that, you know, that, that will exist in, the, in this coming world. I think that's a great vision. I mean, one of the things I think why I, I support that is because if you look at like where the innovation is, it's going as close to the value as it possibly can. That's right. In this case, it's the inputs to the trades. Now you got agentic systems coming online. So the first wave is get the hardware there, NVIDIA and others are leading the way in terms of democratizing supercomputing. That's right. So, okay, I got tons of resource. Now you're seeing more and more, that's why their stock's trading so high. Then the data layer is going to emerge, okay, making sure it's uh, agile, programmable, and then now data inputs come in. That's the right. applications will be coding into the data sets. That's right. So, as people move down closer to the truth, that, that's happening everywhere. I mean, that's I was talking happens. to uh, my friend Silicon Valley, it says, I won't say the name of the company, but they're a big AI company doing yeah. search. Um, they're programming to the kernel level for speed advantage. Because right. once they hit the prompts, they go into the neural network, they're already pre-optimizing the next prompt, okay. not just giving the generated results. So you're already starting to see the intelligence and the performance of the systems working in that direction. That's right. And this is a huge thing. And then, so the next question I want to ask you, because I think this is the, a, a thread that kind of tees up the next chapter uh, of, your, of the journey that we're all living is, you know, we published on the Cube Research um, a power law uh, a year and a half ago. It was the first ones to put out uh, a power law. You had LLMs at the top of the power law, OpenAI and the big guys. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the specialty um, small language models emerging. And we were first, first to see that. Now it's private AI is all the rage. So you start to see the notion of data sets that are either proprietary or pretty, pretty well trained and have enough context, but they're small, they're not big. Models are starting to talk to each other. That's right. So I'm imagining that in your world, data sets will have intelligence about each other That's right. and soon will be programmable. What's your, what's your reaction to that? I, I think that makes a lot of sense. One of the things we're thinking about is, you know, as, as more di in different data sets proliferate, you know, sort of you're going to start to see some blurring of lines because it'll get down to the transaction level and the cohort level and, and the entity structure will emerge. And it's important to have attribution across so that people get paid commensurate for their IP, yeah. right? That's one of the big challenges that we've seen in the data structure is that, you know, uh, while there's been this uh, huge movement in large language models of the last five years, there has been a big question around IP ownership and whether it's Condé Nast or New York Times, they have had, you know, sort of a focus on being taken care of and paid for commensurate for their IP. And so I do think those things need to get sorted out Keep an exchange is the best way. Yeah, and we're gonna keep an eye on that. Obviously, governance is a big deal. Quick final question, what's the your experience with governance been? Because you're shortening the, the ability, the lowering the barriers and shortening the time it takes to get these data sets. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that you guys solve is all that paperwork. That's right. All that hassle that's involved in, okay, I have to sign a contract with this data set. Is it, is it the right data set? What's, the, what's your experience been with governance of data? You know, it's 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 moving fast, and um, in terms of uh, transformation, and uh, providers are getting more thoughtful about how they they want to structure their contracts. What's really interesting is is we actually look at a supplier coming on to our exchange almost like an IPO, yeah. right? Like they have to get ready for the IPO, and so they come on. We have uh, you know standard terms of use that we've worked out with so many folks that we're actually engaging with the conversation. To get to get them commercially ready to go, because there might be two thousand commercially available data sets yeah. out there today, it's going to two hundred thousand over the next yeah. three years. So it's kind of like cloud. You got to do a little bit of work on the front end. You can get in easily, do a little bit of work, but once you're in, you're building. That's right. You're getting value out of it quickly. That's exactly right. Yeah, we we we, we go from uh, a signed contract uh, to ingest to structured in like three weeks. That's awesome. Yeah. Kurt, great to have you on the cube here, and our as we drop in and start kicking off our studio here on the East Coast. 
Oh, I call it our access point yeah. to our network. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, just to kind of end the segment, give a quick plug for the company, Carbon Arc, what you guys are looking for, you're hiring, uh, customers are watching, people are watching. Give a plug for the company. Yeah, so you know we're, we're, we're open for business. Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to democratize the insight stack uh, to help uh, every business out there make better decisions um, in a way that is scalable and, and, and additive to their business. Our data plus your data equals a better outcome. Um, we're hiring engineers. Um, you know, we're in the market for go-to-market specialists and customer success. Uh, and we think that this could be the transformative, uh, you know, sort of company and, and, and movement in the, in the data stack and data structure market. All right, Kirk, great job. Thanks so much. Okay, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, Kirk McEwen, co-founder and CEO of Carbon Arc. Check it out. Data marketplaces are hot. They're only going to get better. They're going to shift towards the sources. If you've got data, the world is going to be great with Generative AI. I'm John Furrier here on the New York Stock Exchange here at our new home on the East Coast. Thanks for watching.